and he passed to the side of their nation, determined to fight for Christianity to the very end, and chased back the group of Persians who had accompanied them. On the eve of the battle, the Armenian soldiers took Holy Communion in the open field of Arar. They listened to the vibrant Gevon Yeretz, whose memorable speech has since been immortalized in the driving spirit of Vartanans, and they listened respectfully to Vartan Monogonian, commander-in-chief of the Ar American Armenian troops. He gave his historic speech preparing the 66,000 Armenian physically and spiritually for the battle. The battle started at dawn. The 66,000 Armenians under Barton Mamikonian encountered an army of 220,000 Persians, reinforced by squadrons of armed elephants, and they were used as tanks. The battle was furious one, but a losing one for, for the vastly un outnumbered Armenians. The brave Barton Mamikonian fell on the battlefield of Barbara as a martyr for Christianity, along with eight other generals. Although the Battle of Vartanos was a military defeat for the Armenians, it has gone down in the Armenian history as the great spiritual and moral victory and is celebrated by all Armenians everywhere with pride because it was fought for the freedom of religion and the freedom of consciousness. It is an important national and religious holiday. Out of the struggle, they emerged two of the greatest figures in American history. Yevon Yeretz, a spiritual leader, and Vartan Mongolia, who unsurpassed military leadership. Thank you. Keep it short. 
And so in that spirit, I'm going to just mention that Dr. Zamanigan has retired from a lifetime of private osteopathic practice in Michigan. He was involved in an advisory capacity in the state of Michigan as an appointee of the governor. He has, in all his adult life, been involved in the HGBU in various leadership capacities. He has been in, uh, involved in the Armenian Church, uh, Diocese Church in, in Detroit, in, in, again, various leadership capacities. He and his wife have uh, one son, and he has now committed his retired life to the, being the Grand Commander of the Knights of Arta. Many of you are aware that Dr. Zamanigan has just completed his first official, uh, first official visit to the lodges of California last week. However, his schedule did not allow him to join us this evening. Dr. Zamanigan's message during uh, his visit, and in fact, since his election to the office of Avak Spadavet this past August, is for the knights of, and daughters of Vartan to focus on the future of building on the traditions and accomplishments of the past of our past 100 years. In Armenia, it will be our increased presence and increasing economic sponsorship, sponsorship of quality of life projects, and you'll hear more about that later. Uh, for our churches, it is by continuing to be available to provide assistance and leadership when called upon. Here in the United States, we need to increase awareness in the larger community of the Knights, of, at Knights and Daughters of Vartan as an organization that has and will continue to be dedicated to perpetuating a rich Armenian cultural and Christian faith. Again, on behalf of Dr. Gary Zamanik, greetings, congratulations to Ardas, Sevan, and Gavon Lodges through the leadership of their Los Angeles County Tri Lodge Committee on another Vardana celebration. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Sarkis. Now moving on with our program. Uh, you will see something very unique and different, as I mentioned earlier tonight. And I think you will be very pleased with what you see and hear. However, just before I get started, I'd like to quote a famous political person from Great Britain, uh, Winston Churchill, which ties in pretty well with what we're going to be doing tonight. Winston Churchill said, a nation that forgets its past has no future. Okay? Profound words. And now, for our program, the introduction to Vartan. The theme to our banquet this evening is Vartanats, past and present. To truly understand the Armenian people of today, we must come to comprehend the dire nature of the Armenian people during the time of Vartan. The Armenians were always a conquered people, but they mostly lived a life apart and independent from any empire. But when the new king of Persia insisted upon all the countries in the empire to worship pagan god, the Armenians resisted. Some like Vasak Shunik opted for a peaceful solution. Free war would disseminate the people and would result in a loss of both wealth and power for Vasak and his family. However, the majority of Armenians and noblemen would not and could not surrender the freedom to not only live their lives as they wish, but to worship their God and his son, Jesus Christ. The Armenians sought assistance
from the Roman and Byzantine empires. But no assistance was to come. The Armenian people had no choice but to count on their glorious leader, General Vartan Mamagonian, to lead the army against the Persians. Let us travel back in time to listen to the inspiring words of Vartan addressing his troops and to you. Thank you. Please look in the back of the room. Lord of the living 
and the dead. He is our God who will judge men according to their deeds. Indeed, even if we were to attain a ripe old age, we shall have to abandon our flesh eventually so that we may unite with our living God, never to leave him again. Now many of you, many of you surpass me in valor and precede me in princely rank. But since you all of your own free will have selected me as your leader and commander, as your spot of it, let my words be agreeable to you all. Do not fear the heathen hordes you will face today and never, ever, Turn your back to the sword of mortal men. If today the Lord grants us victory, then we shall destroy their might and the cause of righteousness exalted. But if the time has come for us to meet a holy death in this battle, let us accept our fate with joyful heart, without mingling cowardice, with our valor and our courage. Now we all remember times our Lord came to our aid and enabled us to defeat the royal armies, to, a, to obliterate the sacrilegious idols they worship, and to annihilate the ungodly decree of the king. He, this king, who thought that we donned Christianity like a garment has now discovered that as a man cannot change the color of his skin, so he cannot and will never succeed in altering our minds because the foundations of Christianity are firmly set on an immovable rock, both on earth and in heaven above. Stand by our firm, by our resolute heavenly commander, a God who will never forget your deeds and valor. It is a great honor that God is performing this work through us, greatly revealing his divine power. If by destroying others for the sake of divine laws, we inherit personal fame and our names remembered forever, how much more valuable will be the reward if we are to die for the great testimony of Jesus Christ. My gallant brothers, the time has now come to meet our enemy. If you remember, there was a time when we were troubled in body and soul. Today, we are joyful because we have with us our Lord as our leader. Our commander in heaven is not a man but the commander-in-chief of all martyrs. Fear is a sign of doubt, but we have repudiated doubt and fear long ago, have we not? So it is time for fear to disappear from our hearts and our minds. Sons and brothers of Armenia, let us as soldiers fight this good fight. For if God is with us, no one can defeat us, even in death. Bon Arach. There goes Barton Lamagonian and his brave soldiers to meet their destiny at Oberheier. Indeed, the battle did not go as Barton had planned, but the war continued. Barton's death only embodied the Armenians to continue the fight to supply and defend Christianity, but to aggressively fight for the right to worship our Lord. The Treaty of Narusad, 33 years later, not only guaranteed the right to worship Jesus Christ in Armenia, but Christianity, once again, began to spread throughout the world. Amariah was just the beginning.